Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Fanatic News, and I'm Joe Borek, and this is going to be a quick preview to the Flyers and Sabres game, which will kick off in about an hour after this video premieres. The Sabres were, of course, one of the Flyers' toughest games of the season thus far in their first game when they had a home-and-home -home against them in back-to-back -back games. Now these are both back-to-back -back away games for the Flyers today at 1 p.m. and 3 p.m. tomorrow. They lost 6-1 to the Sabres and did not show up at all, but then they showed up and shut them out the next day. 3 to nothing. So hopefully we see the performance of the second day more than the first day, and that's what you're likely to see. The Flyers are getting their skaters back. They're going to have a more um, destined lineup, I guess is the way you could put it today, with actual players in. It seems like Limblom will probably be with Lots and Jake potentially. You're still going to have Andre off him, but he's been playing fairly well, even though he's a minus one. Abe Kubel has stepped up from recent games, so he'll go back to the fourth line, most likely with Raffle and Andre off. So now you have the lines all falling into place. Patrick doesn't have to be asked to do too much when he's still working back from a major injury, which is not going to just be a snap of a finger. It has been 16 games, but it's probably going to take more like a half season, and this season is shorter, but... I think really coming into the playoff stretch, the home stretch, is when you're going to see Patty really get going. you got Kevin Hayes, who's doing good offensively. The coaching staff has been calling for more defensively from him, but he's been doing very good offensively and has 16 points. Uh, Giroux has 14 points, obviously. He went off in his first game back with three assists, which was great to see. Uh, then you got Joel Fairby with 15 points emerging into a star two-way player as well. Maybe he can be the next winger to be able to win a Selkie, just like um, what his name was, able to, Mark Stone um, over in Vegas. And then you got Van Riemsdyk, who's just dominating all season. Actually, that first line is all plus four, oddly enough, uh, in Fairby, Couturier, and Van Riemsdyk, if that is the line they roll out with today. They are all actually exactly a plus four. Obviously, when you face the Buffalo Sabres, they're not a very good team. Taylor Hall is a minus 10, and they've been that line's been struggling mightily with Hall and Stahl. Uh, Cousins is the only guy with a decent plus minus at exactly zero. But Cousins has looked solid since coming to the league. It's just not translating fully to the points total. He was able to score a little bit in bunches when he first came up, and now he just has three goals, one assist for four total points. But he does average just over 13 minutes of ice time, so you know they trust him. Olofsson's a player you have to watch, uh, still has a bad plus minus, but offensively has 15 points in 17. Reinhardt has 14 points in 15 games. So you got to watch out for some of those guys on offense, but once you go off the first two lines, there really isn't much threats in the Buffalo Sabres lineup. you got Casey Middlestad, who hasn't been able to develop into what they have hoped, and he's only 22 years old still but just has a three-point output and was drafted eighth overall in 2017, so that's not a good look. Uh, Lazar is a guy that's usually an extra piece for a team. He's their fourth-line center. Eakin, for some teams, would honestly be an extra center. Same with Sheehan, and all three of them are in the lineup for Sheehan as second-line center, Eakin as third, and Lazar as fourth. So you should be able to take advantage, if you're the Flyers, of them down the middle, especially now that you got Hayes back, you got Law in there, and Andreoff's a pretty decent veteran player that can probably play up to 15 game successfully like I said in the Steel Flyers podcast we did with Jim Jackson check that out over there on the Steel Flyers YouTube and also check out Flyers Nitty Gritty YouTube that I also work for they do a lot of great stuff over there and we have a lot of great people like Lance Jamie Yarif the list goes on that do great stuff over there Caitlin etc so definitely check them out but in today's game, I'm going to be looking for Provorov to continue to do his thing. Uh, Gostas Bear seems to be getting a little bit more of an even pep in his step lately and actually has looked pretty good and has made some good defensive plays. Obviously, Sanheim and Myers, that has been one of the more consistent lines for us. And then the Flyers, it's not going to make or break you, but you have to see your third defensive line do better and more consistently. Most of the Flyers' third defensive pairings they put together have been graded when you look at the grades online in the bottom half of the league, which is not a good thing. So you have to be able to solve that third defensive pair. It's not a make or break, but it's something that can definitely help you when you want to get over the hump and be able to not have those just lines that really don't look good. And it's only simply because sometimes of that third defense pair. And then at other times, like the coaching staff is hitting at, it's because the forwards are not chipping in as much on defense. A guy like Andreo probably should be doing a little bit more defense to be able to stay up, but has looked solid. Knack has looked better in that facet lately. 
Uh, Raffle hasn't been as consistent defensively this year. He's been good, but not as consistent defensively. Honestly, a guy that's been very consistent both ways is JVR, who uh, wasn't always obviously touted for his defense, but has stepped up this year. Cooch has been good. Fairbeast has been good. That whole line has been pretty good. Uh, Patrick hasn't been as consistent defensively yet, but is still coming back from an injury, so I look for him to take a step pretty soon there. And then, obviously, you have G, who looked very good, was able to strip the puck from someone the other day and almost create a scoring chance. So that was good to see. So you have to see Giroux continue to be aggressive like he was last game. JVR just continued to dominate along with Fairby, who had the great pass to him. And then Couturier continued to come back and really show his presence and make his presence felt. I think Moose is going to have a great game today. Moose, um, he'll be able to get the win for us in this afternoon game and they'll be able to beat the Sabres and go two and one on them in the season series and then hopefully three and one after they win tomorrow and can hopefully sweep the Sabres which the Flyers should be able to do until the Sabres are able to figure out their goaltending as well which both mm -hmm. Carter Hutton and uh, Old Mark have struggled big time for them um, real quick before we go I'll give the stats he has a 3.25 and an 889 Hutton and then Johansson who's also been in, obviously, for them, has a 3-1-6 in one game. Uh, Olmark, before injury, has actually been their decent guy. Excuse me, I meant to say. Uh, he has a 2.44 and a 9.19. But he's on the injured reserve, and his expected duration, according to Calf Friendly, is unknown. So it'll be interesting if they're going to call up Pekka Lykanen anytime soon. It doesn't seem like the wise thing to do. He's done good in the league with a 2.52908. Than a 2 9 and a 9 16 in the AHL this year. But last year, uh, he did great for the Cyclones, but was with the ECHL. Then has only played three games with Rochester this year after playing 10 last year, which was not as good. So it seems like he's trending upward in the right direction and I think can be a future goaltender for them. You just don't want to rush him. So hopefully for them, you hope Walmart's able to come back soon. But he's not going to play against us. So you should be able to take advantage of peppering both of their goaltenders. And it seems like Hutton today and Johansson tomorrow. But either way they do that, you just got to pepper those guys. And he should be able to get pucks in against those guys. They're just not very consistent goaltenders. Hutton at this point of his career, he did have a pretty solid career before injury. And then Johansson is just more of a minor leaguer. So everyone have a great, safe, and pleasant day. This has been a preview to the Flyers and Sabres game. I believe the Flyers are going to win this game. I guess I'll give a score prediction of... 4-2, to two. the Flyers will win this game against the Buffalo Sabres. They do have some offense in the top of their ranks, and I think some guys like a Reinhardt or an Olsen or an Eichel will be able to get the goals against us. Um, it's just once you go through, like I said, that third or fourth line, they don't really have much that is going to give anything to them. Uh, well, Eichel obviously isn't playing, so not an Eichel, but a Cousins will be able to give uh, goals against us. So you got all those guys there. Um, I think they're going to be able to step up. Skinner has consistently been a scratch. Another big disappointment for them. Where well, the Flyers have not had many disappointments this year. Gus stepped up big time last game, so I look for him to continue to get better along with Goats. And let's pull out this 4-2 to two win and be able to sweep the Sabres in this weekend series. Stay tuned for the post-game following the game today when I do a post-game reaction on my Sports Fanatic News channel. This has been Joe Boric, a.k.a. Pro Joe. Have a great, safe, and pleasant day, everyone, and enjoy all the great hockey action. Peace out.